Okay. All right. Okay. So let me get started. So can. All right. So our uh, last project with uh, FSAT is on um, a new technology that we're trying to um, enable solar power, the renewable source enabled water purification technology. So our team um, has the four members um, Professor Lin Case from the civil engineering, Professor Keith Johnston from chemical engineering, and Professor Casey Faust from civil engineering, and myself from mechanical engineering. So as we know, the um, energy and water issues, let me just move the slides here. The energy and the water issues are two of grand challenges our um, modern society are facing. So role like the, all the water covers 70% of our earth, but very, very limited amount of water is actually fresh water that, that can be directly used by human beings. So, and also the fresh water resources such as uh, river lakes, us, um, having deteriorating pollution and climate water loss. So currently are over 3 billion people actually have these uh, difficulty in terms of getting the, um, the access to the clean water. Um, and as we know, the, there are several technologies that exist the, um, in terms of pushing how um, the water can be, uh, the seawater, for example, the most abundant water source to be usable. So for example, uh, the uh, reverse osmosis or thermal desalination. So this slide actually shows that they have the advantage in terms of more scalable use and also uh, the, um, the, the, the water to the water, natural water resources. But it also there are some limit, limitations because they are more suitable for a centralized production and also evolved high capital costs and also have the significant infrastructure needs and also energy requirements. So that really is associated with the CO2 uh, emission. So one of the example that, um, here. So one of the most in, in, um, kind of most promising way to have the water purify is using the more sustainable approach, for example, solar energy. So the solar energy is the most abundant energy sources. So if we can develop this technology using uh, to produce clean water using only the solar energy as energy input, so we can actually become as much more uh, sustainable and also that can also be a uh, more portable. So one of, but one of the key challenges of a solar power, the process typically evolving evaporating water is the, the solar energy itself, it's diffusive. So it's, it requires high energy demand for the efficient evaporation of water. And also the solar concentrator is often needed. So you wanted to have high energy and the solar intensity coming in to have appreciable the water evaporation and to be able to co co collect it. And also another tech, uh, the limitation is the, um, the cost of solar absorber and also the following problem similar to the, um, the, the RO membranes and also the bacteria contamination. So long-term storage is also another kind of challenges. So uh, what we actually are aiming to address is the, um, how we can use the solar energy very efficiently. And this is actually is the, back in 2018. So we developed a technology that used the first hydrogel evaporator and then take advantage of this polymer water interaction that we can tune between the water and then the hydrophilic polymers. So this, our, this slide shows our initial design. We use hydrophilic, means water-like uh, polymer, polyvinyl alcohol PVA as the molecular backbone. And also another uh, polymer component is solar absorptive, uh, solar absorptive polypyrrole, PPY as solar absorber. So they have these very hierarchically um, structure, structural uh, channels. So they actually can concentrate in the sunlight, but also meanwhile, meanwhile can give in um, these capillary force that have very efficient water transport. So once it's water evaporated at the interface, so they can actually be uh, very uh, uh, efficiently transport from the bulk water. So we actually uh, demonstrated, so these hydrogel is very unique and they can be, um, be very efficient uh, solar absorber. So this slide actually shows what is the kind of differences between our hydrogel technology versus other technology. So you can see from this um, plot, so our evaporation rate we found is almost double of state-of-the-art. So this is under uh, the one suns and also the um, evaporation um, efficiency in terms of getting this clean water is much more uh, sufficient than this WHO and EPA uh, required salinity level. And moreover, the hydrogel actually has very unique interaction with water. So they have this um, efficient anti-fouling problem. So they can enable the long-term water uh, desalination. So this actually is, we demonstrated initially is more from uh, several weeks to about a month. 
So what actually supported us um, uh, greatly in the past couple of years is from the um, Energy Institute. So we further um, So we further um, found push this technology with more um, scalable and cost-effective materials. So this is one slide that shows that we use this biomass, this conjugate uh, glucomanin. So this is a bio-derived materials. And we actually develop these iron-based inorganic photothermal nanoparticles. So when, once these both material, um, both components in, in, um, introduce into these gel evaporator, so they can actually become very efficient. And also we demonstrate that they can work with um, a wide degree of uh, acidity and uh, alkalinity. And also we can actually work with a highly concentrated kind of um, uh, seawater with high uh, salinity. And uh, later on we found, sorry, sorry to maneuver. Another uh, work that we found is um, studying that the surface wettability states. So controlling this different hydrophilic versus hydrophobic state. So you can have different kind of lines between hydrophilic and hydrophobic contact lines. And we found that is with increased thickness of the water layer in the hydrophilic regime. So they can have these very rapid kind of water molecules escaping. And also these long contact lines between hydrophilic and hydrophobic regimes. So they can enable um, very high water evaporation rate. And we also demonstrated these 3D printed solar portable solar water purification system. So they can be used for these kind of more point contact and kind of water purification systems. And one of the most recent work that we found is also the um, in terms of the long-term stability. So to address these bacteria uh, uh, bacteria challenges, so we developed in here is the, the first antibacterial hydrogel. So we call it ABH. So with the category, the small molecular enabled molecular, um, the molecular uh, hydrogen peroxide generator, and we use the quinone chemistry and the coated onto the active carbon um, particles. So we can design for this um, very effective uh, water treatment. So basically it's the hydrogen peroxide that developed during the process, they can attack the cell components and disturb, disturb the bacteria uh, metabolism. So they can be directly used as the hydrogel tablets to achieve over 99.999% um, water disinfection efficiency and also without the need of energy input. And also due to their antibacterial properties, they can also be used as the uh, photothermal and biofouling resistant um, uh, photo, um, the solar evaporators. And we demonstrated right now it's beyond months. So it's quite a few months of storage and operations. They can still be um, very, very stable. And then one of the, the latest work that we, um, that we found is the also for a better handleability. So to address their mechanical property uh, challenges, so we developed these called self-assemble templating method. So we can use, for example, the PMMA polymers as sacrificial layer. So with, with this PMMA uh, sacrificial layer removed, given this different size control of PMMA, so they can form these very highly um, porous interconnected hydrogel. So we call it the IP, IPH. So this is actually is we can control with the sacrificial layer with this internal por porosity and then without need of freeze drying. So typically these hydrogel needs to have the freeze drying to maintain their um, microstructure or nanostructures. And then once you, we use these sacrificial self-assemble template, so it becomes extremely lightweight and also mechanically uh, very uh, stable. And actually I originally put like one um, video showing that these gels without um, uh, active material, they can still become very squeegee and actually it's very, very reliable. But uh, sorry, the video cannot be played. This is actually the, uh, the last slide I'm going to show you that in, in terms of how um, they can be um, mechanically handled. So this is actually, as you can see, the, our de newly developed hydrogel, they are extremely stable mechanically. So even after these various rolling and folding and even twisting over like 100 times, they can remain still workable and then their, their performance is also stay very stable. So this actually technique we lately de develop, we believe is they are very gentle and, and, uh, and versatile. So they can accelerate the use of our hydrogel for more practical uh, applications. So given the time uh, constraint, so let me turn to uh, our uh, co-lead professor at Lin Case. With the uh, lack of time, um, I'll just show you a couple things. So I'm going to advance forward. Um, I know people want to stay on um, 
target. But our goal was basically um, we're trying to develop a scaled model of this system, and that will allow us to do uh, testing of components of potential toxicity or concern and to demonstrate that the technology um, can be put into a system with uh, pretreatment and post-treatment and storage and allow its application at areas. This is a picture of a, a small village in, in Chile on the uh, coast of Chile, and they're actually using um, reverse osmosis right now for their energy, uh, for their water and for their water needs and ge uh, generating the energy from solar power. So this could be an option for them. So this is a schematic of our solar system um, where you can see this is our panel and it sits within a, uh, a part of our prototype design. Um, this is now sitting on the roof of uh, the EC8J building and operating. Um, we're doing water quality analysis on this and, and um, we're scaling this system so we can actually use the hydrogel that we have available to uh, look at toxic organics. Um, and then the other component of the work that we're looking at is understanding the motivators and barriers for adoption. And so um, we have developed a system where we're looking both at the socio um, technological framework. In other words, we separate the technical framework and we link it to the social operating framework to be able to do this. So our approach then is to um, make this system uh, understandable in terms of can we to get this adopted. Um, and then finally, um, we want to basically see whether this adoption leads to high resiliency and high legitimacy. So to do this, we did a literature review. We looked at um, thousands of articles. And from that, we were able to assess uh, barriers and motivators for a variety of um, decentralized technologies. Um, so our studies cover uh, all across the globe. And if we look specifically at solar disinfection, what we can find is that most barriers end up on the technical side, most motivators end up on the social side, and um, the differences among those um, when we look at things that have very similar number of motivators and barriers really become site specific or situation specific. So with that in mind, we develop these heat maps. And so this is really the, the bottom line of what I'd like to show you. And, and that is that when we um, look at this heat map where we're looking at the technologies coming down in the rows and the, uh, or sorry, the the barriers and motivators in the rows and the technologies in the columns, what we see is that for solar disinfection, the uh, motivators are associated with user preference and public health advocacy where green indicates more motivators and the red indicates fewer the absence of motivators. And surprisingly, operation and maintenance showed up as um, very, uh, low in terms of motivators. And if we then move to barriers, what we see is that, um, again, now green indicates few to no barriers, while red indicates the presence of many. And we see user preference um, also um, shows up with uh, in as, as part of uh, barriers. But again, operation and maintenance doesn't seem to be an issue. And as we look at really getting this technology into play, then we can look at what these motivators and barriers are and address those in terms of getting to adoption. So with that, I'll stop and uh, try to stay on a little bit for time in time with you for you.